The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Self-reliant citizens living in their own mortgage-free homes are the cornerstone of a free country. That is why, of all the manifold services rendered by the Equitable Society to nearly six million people, near the top in importance is the Equitable's Assured Home Ownership Plan. In about 14 minutes, Mr. Keating will be back to tell you homeowners about the Equitable Society's famous Assured Home Ownership Plan. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Jewel Theft. It's titled, The Canvas Back Frame-Up. Have you ever given any thought to the high cost of crime in the United States? Remember, our yearly crime bill has many items. It includes all the millions of dollars worth of goods lost in robberies plus all the money spent in running down criminals, plus the huge cost of maintaining police forces, criminal courts, and prisons. Speaking before a group of Midwestern economists, FBI Director Hoover said, the cost of crime in this nation annually can be figured not in millions of dollars, but in billions. Tonight's case from the official files of your FBI was selected because it points out a simple way to cut down this staggering crime bill because it shows what measures respectable citizens like you can take to avoid being victimized by some member of the underworld. Tonight's file opens in a small, dimly lit gymnasium on the second floor of an old, unpainted building located in the slum section of an eastern city. In one corner, a big heavyweight punches the bag as a lean, gray-haired man approaches. Hello, Johnny. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr... Ramsey. Well, kid, sharpening up the old left hand? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you look like you've been losing a little weight. Yeah, I've been working heavy every day. Good, good. Still want to come back, huh? Oh, sure. As soon as I get me a manager. Uh, Johnny, you got a manager? No, no. No, you walked out on me, Mr. Ramsey. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute, boy. It isn't like that, son. I turned you loose because I wasn't able to book you myself. I figured now that maybe somebody could do a better job than me. Get a little more shoulder into those punches, son. Atta boy. There you do. That's it, stuff. That's it. You like to get back into action, Johnny, huh? Are you kidding? No, I got a bout for you. Okay, let's hear about it. Well, it ain't delivered yet. I wanted to make sure first that you'd take it. Oh, I'll take anything. Who's it with? Tiger Young. Oh, Mr. Ramsey, he's a touch. Why, I can flatten him in one round. Well, if you do, we got no deal. What? You know who owns Tiger Young? Well, yeah, sure, Freddie Dobson. And behind Dobson is the mob. If you fight him, you've got to wear handcuffs. Mr. Ramsey, I never fought that way. Well, now, look, son, I'm not telling you what to do. But I'd like to point out that matchmakers aren't around looking for a 32 or 3-year-old heavyweight, you know. Well, I'm as good now as I was five years ago. Hey, Johnny, I can get you 500 for this deal. And if you make it look good, you can get five or six repeaters. Change your name, fight them in different towns. Oh, I don't like it, Mr. Ramsey. All right, all right. Oh, all right. Look, you don't have to answer me now, you know. Think it over. When you make up your mind, call me. Now, did Miss Caldwell get in here? Yes, Jan. She's in her dressing room. Oh, thanks, sir. Who is it? It's me, Johnny. Hi, Alma. Look, I asked you to quit coming backstage. It ain't professional. I, uh, I had to see Alma. What for? Well, I got something important to talk to you about. Couldn't it wait till after the show? Uh-uh, no, no. 
Okay. What is it? Well, I... I got an offer from the mob. Well, you're moving up in class. They, uh... They got a fighter. You gonna train him? No. Fight him. Who is it? Oh, it's a kid named Tiger Young. I remember the last time you went in with a young kid. Oh, I won't get hurt this trip. They letting you wear a helmet? I'm supposed to take a dive. Oh. They're trying to build a kid into a big name. By stopping you? They want me to fight him six times in different places. You see, the chaos will fatten his record. <laughs> You'll have to join the actors' union. I, uh, ain't sure I'm gonna do it. Oh, well, what's in it? Oh, 500. For six fights? No, no, for each fight. And you're not sure? Well, no. Look, Johnny. I've been going with you for three years. Most of that time, you've taken me on a mad whirl of hamburger stands and movie balconies. So up comes somebody who wants to give you three fat G's. Three ever-loving thousand dollars, and you're wondering whether you should take it. Well, let me tell you. Yeah? You're on next, Alma. Okay. Get out, will you? I got a change. Look, Alma, I... Hello, will you? I, I just want to tell you that I'm taking the deal. <laughs> following morning at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor approaches the desk of Agent Bill Manning. Well, welcome home, Bill. Thanks, Jim. How's it feel being back? After that stretch in the hospital, what do you think? Well, if there's any heavy legwork on the new case, I'll handle it for you. No, that's all right. Well, this one's your old specialty, Bill. Jewel theft. Where? Here. And what's the federal angle? Part of the loot, a large diamond ring turned up a few days ago in a hawk shop down south. Oh? $50,000 worth in all was taken, and this is the first piece to show only pros bury their stuff that way. Who pawned the ring? Um, no, his name's on my desk, but I remember he's in the prize fight business down south. Doing what? He owns a gym. Claims he won the ring in a crap game at his place Christmas night. Their stories haven't changed. Well, apparently this isn't an alibi. Don't tell me he remembers which player gave it to him. No, but the police records show that a crap game was raided there that night. And the owner was in it? That's right. Who else was arrested? Nine others, but some used fictitious names. No point checking that angle, then. This gymnasium owner got any record? No. Police down there say he's clean. Unless he talks, Jim, I don't see where we go. I'm having a list made up of fighters, managers, and everybody else in the business who were in that town at the time. When it's ready, we'll start moving. Hello? 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 Is this Alma? Yeah? George Ramsey. Oh, thought you were out of town. Oh, I'm just here between trains. Johnny with you? No, no, he went directly to our next stand, Fort City. How'd the dive go? Very graceful. Say, Alma, I'm calling to ask you a little favor. You working this week? No. Could you come over to Fort City? I want you to talk to Johnny about something. Oh, well, what is it? Well, I can't explain it over the phone. <laughs> Why should I go all the way to Fort City? Alma, there's money in it for you. You could make a lot of money. Will you come? When? Tomorrow night. As the train gets in there about 7 o'clock. You come right over to the arena, and I'll have a ticket for you at the box office, and I'll see you inside during the fight. Uh, can I get through, please? Oh, hi, George. Well, kid, you look cute. What delayed you? The train was late. Mm -hmm. That's Johnny fighting? That's him. Oh, how come you're not in his corner? Well, his name is K.O. Drew tonight. I'm not even supposed to know him. Oh. Is that Tiger Young in there with him? Yep. He's a stiff. Well, that's why I sent for you. You want me to fight him? <laughs> that's pretty good. No. no, I just want you to sell Johnny a small bill of goods. Like what? Well, the price of this fight tonight is ten to one. It'll be the same next week in Centerville. Now, if you can talk Johnny into flattening the tiger the next time out, we can take some of that 10 to 1 and win ourselves a nice, neat little bundle. Well, what about the mob? It won't be their money we're taking. Don't worry about that. This will be local action. Yeah, but what'll they do to Johnny? Don't worry. Nothing will happen, I assure you. You think Johnny could stop him? Oh, he'll knock a bow legged sure. Have you talked to him about this? No, that's why I sent for you. I think you'd do a much better job. Are you interested? What do I get? You'll get half of what I win. Look. 
There's a nice, intimate little club around the corner from our hotel. You get him to take you over there tonight, see? The soft lights, the music, the nearness of you would kind of bring us both a nice, tidy little profit. <laughs> You've been looking for me, Jim? Oh, yeah, Bill. I wanted to bring you up to date. I re-interviewed the victim and learned that she went to a fight here at the stadium the night she was robbed. Wearing all that jewelry? That's right. That was practically an invitation. So what do you got there? Oh, it's a teletype that just came in. These are all the people in the fight game who were around that gymnasium where they had the crab game. Mm. I'm cross-checking it with a list of the names of everybody who fought at the stadium the night of the robbery. Any duplications? Uh, just one so far. Say, Jim, look what's coming in on the machine. Why is it? More of the loot. A necklace and another ring turned up. Oh, where? Ford City. The police raided a fence and found him. Any word on where he got him? Well, let's see. No. No, he refused to give police any information. We better call Ford City, Bill. Find out who's fought there recently. If anybody turns up on all three lists, we've got a pretty strong suspect. <laughs> You want to dance, Alma? No, honey, let's just sit here. Well, how about another drink? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, you know, Alma, I can't get over your coming here. What a surprise. I told you, I just got lonesome. Yeah? Well, I hope you keep feeling that way. Uh, not when you're with me, I mean, but when I'm away from you. I will, honey. Hey, I've got an idea. How about coming on to the next stand? Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't. I, I start rehearsing again next week. Well, you could come for a few days. Oh, but I'd be in the way. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? Well, look, I, I might as well tell you. I just don't want to see you take another dive. Oh. oh. You know, I got so mad tonight. I kept saying to Ramsey all during the fight, if this thing was on the level, Johnny could murder that guy. You could, too, couldn't you? Yeah, sure, sure. I could take him. Knock him out? Yeah. Then why don't you do it? Well, it, hmm? When you fight him again, why don't you level and put him away? Now, my honey, do you know what you're saying? Yes. But the dough I'm getting, honey, before I left on this thing, you told me to take the three Gs. Maybe you could get more dough this way. Well, what do you mean? Well, Ramsey says the price on both fights so far has been ten to one against you. If you were to take some of that, knock the tiger out, we'd make a hatful. Honey, you're forgetting the mob owns this guy. If I flatten the tiger, I can use the dough for a coffin. Not if you tell the whole story to the papers. How they hired you to throw these fights. How you did toss a couple. And you got so you couldn't sleep nights thinking about it. Uh-uh, no, 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 The Alma. papers would eat it up. You'd be a hero. Alma, honey, you've been seeing too many movies. Look, you might even get a return match with a guy. A legitimate match that could draw, say, say 50000 Alma, I ain't gonna do it. Oh, you fool. Huh? You stupid, punch-drunk fool. Hmm? Here's your chance, your last chance to do something. Uh, to get something. I don't want it, Alma. Okay, then you don't want me either. Alma! I'm leaving. <laughs> We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file which shows how your FBI helps promote America's security. Now a special message about home mortgages. Do you know the difference between an old-fashioned and a truly modern mortgage? A modern mortgage plan should have, first, a painless method of paying off the mortgage years ahead of time, and second, emergency protection for you and your family against foreclosure and disaster. Believe it or not, a plan like that actually exists. It is known as the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan. Membership in this plan is restricted to a select group of homeowners. To those fortunate enough to qualify, it offers these four benefits. First benefit, this plan provides an easy way to pay off the mortgage years ahead of schedule. Here's how this works. In the Assured Home Ownership Plan, a low-cost first mortgage is combined with life insurance protection. The insurance element creates a cash loan fund which increases steadily. Each year, the mortgage grows smaller and the cash loan fund bigger. That's how I paid off my mortgage six years ahead of time. Now I own my home free and clear. Second benefit, the cash loan fund is a friend in need when sickness or unemployment threaten home security. One year, the company I work for went out of business. 
Meeting my mortgage payments would have been pretty tough without that cash loan fund. Third benefit. If the owner dies, his widow doesn't inherit a mortgage. She inherits her home free and clear. What's more, the Equitable Society not only cancels the mortgage, but also returns to the widow every cent her husband had paid to reduce the principal. Lastly, the mortgage draws interest not at 6, not at 5, but at 4%. And closing costs are low. Naturally, a plan like this can't be offered to everyone. Your Equitable Society representative will tell you whether you can qualify for this money-saving, home-saving, assured homeownership plan. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, the canvas back frame-up. This evening's FBI file involves crooked prize fights. This week's headlines report an almost parallel situation. The black plague of crooked gambling has again invaded amateur basketball. While there is little excuse for the boys who betrayed their college, their teammates, and their parents, except their youth and inexperience, most of us feel inclined to put the major share of the blame on the vermin of professional gamblers and bookmakers. But forgetting excuses... Isn't there a reason that goes far deeper than most of us admit? Isn't it the get-something-for-nothing spirit that has infected present-day society, the the get-it-while-the-getting's-good philosophy of our times? That such a spirit should be reflected in our youth may shock us, but it should not surprise us. No field is safe from attempted encroachment by criminals. They will move in where the situation allows. It is up to you, the people, acting individually and together to stop them, Your FBI can tell you one heartening fact. Through your efforts, they can be stopped. Tonight's file continues the following week at the local FBI field office. Bill, I think I found our jewel thief. Hmm? Who? He's a fighter named Johnny Boone. He was down south Christmas week. He fought at the stadium here the night the jewels were stolen. And he was in Ford City last week. Boone. That's it. I don't remember his name being on the list we got from Ford City. Oh, it wasn't. He fought there as K.O. Drew. Oh. I saw the billboards for last week's fight and recognized his picture. Where's Boone from? Here. I called the police, but they've got no record on him. Maybe he uses different names for stealing, too. Ah, well, they're checking on that angle now. How about an address on him? No, nothing yet. Bill, I think we should go out and cover all the fight hangouts. That could give us some lead on where to find him. that you girls have shown me how to stumble. Suppose you give me an idea of how you dance. Al, those kids are dead tired. They've been rehearsing six hours without a break. Ah, uh, so have I. Sitting in a chair. How about some lunch? Okay, okay. Take 30 minutes. Thanks. Hey, Alma. Oh, Alma. Oh, hi, Mr. Ramsey. Oh, okay. I was hoping I'd find you here. How come you're not in Centerville? Well, the fight's not till tonight. I came down especially to see you. What this time? Now, look, I want you to take another shot at persuading Johnny. No dice. Now, look, there's plenty of time. We can get our bets down. I don't want any part of it. I'm through with the guy. Alma, I want to show you something. Look, baby, I got a box here. (laughs) Trying to bribe me with candy? Honey, this isn't candy. Take a peek. Jewelry. Is this stuff real? Every piece of it. What are you worried about winning a bet for? Well, you see, the stuff is a little bit warm. The longer it cools off, the more it's worth. I had to sell a few pieces, but I'd like to keep the rest. Why are you showing it to me? Well, so you can take your pick. Huh? Go ahead. Uh, How about that ring? It's yours. What's the angle? Now, look, this bracelet here matches the ring, see? You sell Johnny on the idea, and that's yours, too. When are you through rehearsing? In an hour. Well, there's a train to Centerville just about then. I'll be on it. Hey, kid. Johnny, you better start getting undressed. Well, it's still an hour to the fight, Mr. Ramsey. Room in here for one more? 
Alma. Well, how do you like... Well, look, Alma. <laughs> Had a few days off, so I thought I'd come up and see you. Oh, gee, I'm glad you did. Now, look, if you kids will excuse me, I'm going out to collect Johnny's money. I'll be back. Come in. Hello. We're looking for a Johnny Boone. Now, uh, this is Battling Bentley's dressing room. We have a picture here of Johnny Boone. That's him right there. Oh, are you boys from the Boxing Commission? We're special agents, the FBI. You're my credentials. You are Johnny Boone, aren't you? Yes, sir. Who are these people? Well, I'm George Ramsey. I'm the kid's manager. And you, miss? I'm Alma Caldwell. Yeah, she's his girl. Mr. Boone, we came to get your story on that jewelry. What jewelry? A ring was lost in a crap game down south on Christmas night. You were in that game. Last week, a fence in Ford City bought two other pieces of loot. You were there for a fight. Oh, so that's where you've been getting all that money. Boy, what? has that extra money lately? Yeah. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? Oh, Johnny, now you know you spent Look, that... Ramsey. Oh, you no. lost a ring in that crap game. I remember. Oh, now, Johnny, just you know that is Just a true. minute. Miss Caldwell, that ring you're wearing, may I see it, please? Well, why? Bill, will you let me have the description list of the stolen jewelry? Yeah, sure. Here. Thanks. A ring, please, Miss Caldwell. Okay. Thank you. All right, it's on the list, Bill. Miss Caldwell, where'd you get this ring? Well, I, uh... Either one of these men give it to you? Yes. Which one? Johnny. What? You did, Johnny. You... Look, she's framing me. They're, they're Mr. both Boone, are... Mr. Boone, you'd better come along to the office with us. Jim, we just had a call from the office. They have a report on Boone's fingerprints. Oh, what's his story? The only card they've got on him shows that he was in the service. No arrest records at all. Uh-huh. Did you interview him again? Yeah. And he still denies everything. Claims he was back at the training camp at the time of the robbery. Why would he go back there after the fight? He says to pay his bill and spend a quiet night. Well, that should be easy enough to check. I called the camp. Oh? Nobody remembers whether he came back or not. Uh-huh. How'd you make out with the manager? He's well covered. Claims he wasn't even managing Boone in Ford City. I'm having that checked now. Good. How about the girl? She still insists that Boone gave her the ring. Well, everything points to his guilt, all right. But I don't know. There's just some... No, I'll get it done. Hello. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. You did where? Uh -huh. Yes, please. Thanks very much. Bill, the police just found a box containing some more of the loot. Where? At the arena, under Johnny Boone's locker. Is it? Me, Alma. Oh, come on in. There's nothing drearier than a cheap hotel on a rainy afternoon. Well, how about a little drink? No, thanks. You know, George, I kind of feel like a heel. Hmm? Why? Doing what I did to Johnny. Alma. Alma, this is George Ramsey you're talking to. I mean it, George. I feel awful. I think maybe I should go to the police and tell them the truth. Honey, you wouldn't be trying to make some kind of a little deal with me now, would you? A deal? I know you of old, honey. Oh, sweetie pie. When you get sentimental, I can hear a cash register start to ring. Well, you did promise me a bracelet. I'm sorry, but the boat sailed. I haven't got it anymore. I had to use it as a plant. What do you mean? I put it in a box under Johnny's locker. Why? Well, if the cops find it, they'll think it's Johnny's. If they don't, I just go back and pick it up. Suppose the cleaning guy finds it. Baby, this joint hasn't been cleaned since John L. Sullivan fought Jake Kilrain. Hello? Oh. Yeah, Mr. Taylor? Yeah? Well, hmm. Well, now, isn't that fine? Oh, I'm delighted. Thanks very much for letting me know. Alma... They've let Johnny go. What? That was the FBI man. He said they called back east and had Johnny's picture shown to the people who got robbed. They said he definitely wasn't the stick-up man. Come on, we got to get over to the arena in a hurry. What for? Johnny will head for there to get his clothes, and I don't want him to find that box. <laughs> Yeah. 
Is this his dressing room? No, no, keep going. It's down, down the end of the hall. Wait a minute. Huh? Look, Johnny coming out of the dressing room. Has he got the box? I don't know. I don't see it. Johnny, uh, we, we heard you got out. Is that a fact? Wait around, kid. We'll split a cab up the hotel. I don't want to talk to either one of you. But Johnny, now, look. Just you... leave me alone. That'll be a pleasure. Come on, let's go and get that box. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thanks. Where'd you put it? Right under the locker. Is it still there? Wait a minute now. No, no need to hurry. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh, I'll take that bracelet now. All right, now, don't be impatient. Look, All will right. you let me get it? Hey. What's, oh, a, what's oh, the matter? Oh, 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 this thing should rattle. Well, open it. Huh. <clears throat> Empty. Let me look. There you are. See for yourself. Ah. Johnny must have found it. Yeah. He'll have to go back to the hotel. Ditch the box. That's it. Let's go. Hold it, Ramsey. What do you want? We figured somebody would come back for that box. What box? Bill, get the lamp ready, will you? Right, Jim. Hold out your hands, please. What for? Do as I ask, please. You too, Miss Cole. What's that thing supposed to? George, my hands, they're purple. Oh, look, so am I. You're both under arrest. George Ramsey was tried and convicted for violation of the Interstate Transportation of Stolen Property Act. He was sentenced to five years imprisonment. Alma Caldwell was convicted of accessory after the fact and received a sentence of two years in the federal penitentiary. When Special Agents Taylor and Manning received the box containing the rest of the jewelry, they decided upon a way to determine which suspect was guilty. After removing the jewels and having the box dusted with fluorescein, they returned it to its hiding place under the locker. Fluorescein is a powder invisible under ordinary light. However, anyone touching it retains enough to show splotches of purple when the skin is exposed to black light. By using a portable machine, the two special agents were able to establish Johnny Boone's innocence when he left the dressing room, and as you have seen, to establish the guilt of George Ramsey and Alma Caldwell. And so another case from the files of your FBI was closed, but not until it had again been proven that special agents work as hard to determine the innocence of a suspect as to establish his guilt. That every investigation is conducted not to get a conviction, but to get the facts. One last word on mortgages. If you're a homeowner, wouldn't it give you a thrill to be able to say... No more mortgage to worry about. Now we own our home free and clear. And it's an even greater thrill to be able to say those words while you're still young, with many carefree years ahead of you. Ask your Equitable Society representative to explain how the Equitable Society's assured homeownership plan can make that dream come true years ahead of time. See your Equitable Man soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, safe cracking. Its title, the tin can killing. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Walter Catlett, Dick Crenna, Marlo Dwyer, Wally Mayer, and John Sheehan. This is your FBI, a Jerry Devine production, was directed by Sid Goodwin. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the tin can killing on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. 
This program came to you from Hollywood.